Hello, I want to end this series uh, in regards to magic wands and how they connect to weights and measures as a wand literally being a measuring rod. Um, and add a few points, but just a, a review. And so traditionally the wand connected to the magician. However, um, the definition of a wand going back some time includes the measuring rod. Uh, also, the reed would also be included as a pen as well, so uh, a drawing or a writing implement would be connected with that. And that brings us back, to, well, way back in time to the Egypt, Egyptian god Thoth, connected to writing, to wisdom, to magic and knowledge, god of weights and measures. And so one of the famous depictions of him in the Egyptian Book of the Dead has the uh, passage through the Juat and the, uh, from this life into the afterlife includes uh, the weighing of the soul by Anubis, but you also see him with um, uh, doing, doing Italian, so he's writing with a reed, he's writing with a wand, he's also the god of weights and measures, and so a ruler is a wand. That of course connects to Hermes and this famous symbol of uh, Caduceus, which has many other aspects uh, um, went in through, but so uh, a magical wand is, so what is magic as well, like a magician's trick, a, a magician has knowledge and he's able to trick people just like Hermes is a uh, uh, trickster god and so from Foe through to Hermes also called Mercury they're the famously gods of weights and measures they're carrying the wand or the rod uh, uh, Foth being part bird and we see Hermes has the same ability the ability to fly uh, again a bird hybrid and a bringer of knowledge both of them are gods of weights and measures and weights and measures is extremely important in this because when I end this particular series I'm going to follow on because I've been talking about the symbolism the history of it which connects all these multiple ancient cultures but next I'm going to provide some uh, very important information into how these ancient cultures are actually connected not just through the symbols but by measurably their, their units of measure harmonized together at very important points and in temples such as the Great Pyramid, we can find empirical evidence of that. And so, a yardstick, uh, it's even, a, you know, a yardstick is a term to, you know, an expression of truth. And it's also a wand. And, okay, I'm freezing up here, but, uh, so we have, again, uh, Foth, the wand, the rods, the bringing together of the upper and lower kingdom with separate units of measure, bringing them together into the unified kingdom. And of course, so uh, lots of other information in this particular drawing, um, which connects to uh, some um, other published info, but here's more of it. Uh, the moon god, weights and measures, god of knowledge, god of magic, god of writing. The same theme, so the Sumerian, so what, uh, after I finish this series, I'm going to provide some very important evidence which connects the Sumerian, uh, ancient Sumerians, the Indus and the Egyptian. Uh, together, which also will eventually link to some other, um, such as the me uh, megalithic yard and connecting them. But Inanna, famously descended into the underworld, the measuring rod of lapis lazuli. Uh, the, yeah, so um, again, the Sumerian legends has the same uh, intertwined snakes and the figure with the measuring rod or the wand. Uh, this is another symbol of measure. Uh, with the rod and a coiled rope, so a measuring rod or a measuring line. This is again Sumerian, the um, sun god, Code of Hammurabi, one of the oldest books of law. Oh, oh, it's full with you know, uh, laws, but laws around weights and measure, uh, magic wands, measures being important to trade, taxation, uh, the whole economy, but also ancient metallurgy. For instance, um, uh, Elam glass back there's even a tablet which describes a, a process to create grass, uh, glass going back to this period so alchemy or chemistry um, this is all uh, connected to it um, across cultures uh, uh, especially connected with geometry as well geo you know geometry being earth measure the twin coiled snakes connections to writing the same gods the same themes um, the same knowledge and uh, and so in a symbolic sense we can see this uh, we, in the sense of law we can see this the legends um, are full of this uh, just going through as a quick review the uh, uh, music again being connected to measure and measurement to Hermes and Hermes and Apollo and that whole story and so these symbols the olive branch again so 
uh, these terms which we connect, which are connected to measure, so like on the level, a yardstick, um, extended olive branch, these are all connected to the wand or the measuring rod and weights and measures, and which is very important to a peaceful, stable society. Uh, so we see the development of Hermes uh, connections with uh, Hermes to the Greeks, Mercury to the Romans. Uh, we'd be more familiar with this symbol, but it's the same. Uh, wings on the feet, traveler's hat, and the caduceus, the measuring rod with the twin snakes. And so God of tricksters, commerce, weights and measure, and travelers, as in navigation as well. Uh, commerce and traveling, navigation, knowledge, weights and measures, measure, measures, these things are all connected through law. The symbols still carry uh, with us, so the olive branch. And the symbolism of the dollar bill, but also the silver coin, I will show how that also extends back to Old Kingdom, Egypt, and um, the Indus civilization, and how various weights and measures harmonize, and sometimes depicted with, well, again, uh, weights and measures, and we see the, the lotus and this uh, ank-like, um, oh, geez, what's the name of that flower? But... Uh, Again, so Darius with the measuring rod and the lotus, both with the two with the upper and lower kingdom with the separate measuring rods, but bringing them together, bringing the weights and measures together. Uh, commerce again, so this symbol will extend into this is uh, Sydney here, and how weights and measure symbols, such as carrying the weight and the measuring rod, how that also um, extends to Mercury and the journey into the underworld, just like uh, Foth and Anubis, because Hermanubis being a, a later fusion of Hermes and Anubis, which is a fusion of um, Foth and Anubis, and even the connections to the journey into the underworld uh, are, are all there. The uh, books of law going you know, back, so the Book of the Dead, um, keeping honest weights and measures, the importance of this in a in a keeping a stable society, gods of knowledge, gods of measurement. Uh, also transitioning from Egypt into uh, the Old Testament and the Torah and Moses who carried the book of law and also uh, the staff or the wand and this has to do with measuring throughout the Bible. Uh, so many uh, references to it again, keeping honest measures, keeping honest weights. Now, uh, what I haven't mentioned is, so we have that, the Kadu now, the uh, Kakara or uh, Shajuku, uh, Shaku Ujo, sorry, used by pilgrims, so the Buddhist tradition of priests and monks carrying this wand, and the uh, not so subtle connections. Now, even in the Chinese monastery, the head monk uses this as a symbol of his authority. He, just like kings and queens carry the scepter and orb to show their authority to define weights and measures. We see very much the same thing happening here. And this also later become a weapon used by the Shaolin. And that's an important reference because um, the journey to the West, Sun Wukong, all throughout Asian literature, there are some very important numbers. You might recognize this if you're old enough, the show Monkey Magic, which is about journey to the West, Sun Wukong. And well, he could uh, amongst other, well, he could jump 108,000 Li in a single somersault and 72 transformations. These being the same numbers in the uh, described in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Um, for instance, Foth won 72 days for the for the moon. 108 being a symbol, uh, a measurement you'll also find in the Great Pyramid and many other places. 108 feet also um, appears more than what coincidence would allow for. But in regards to the Shaolin, so 36 movements, 72 movements, these are all the same numbers across time, cross cultures, Epic of Gilgamesh, um, and how these me units of measure all, all come together. And it's just uh, evidence of, uh, of, of, of a single origin to our society, our civilizations that joins Egypt, Sumer, and the Indus, as well as other places going back way before the, the official history will count. But using weights and measures I'm going to show this and that will be in the next series but the Magna Carta is famous because it's sort of the birth of modern democracy and one of the main themes in the Magna Carta was um, that the king was forced by the nobles to define what weights and measures were and what taxes were and again to bring about a stable society. Uh, Long Man of Wilmington. So this is often said to be uh, very ancient and however there is some evidence to say it probably extended from the 1500s because the instability in the hillsides. So maybe it was an older reconstruction, but just like uh, based on description, so imagine the Druid priests, all priests carry this rod 
or a wand um, and and this is important because around this period they were still using what's called the Drusian or the Saxon foot which is exactly the same foot as used by the Sumerians and the Indus and again I'll show how these units of measure connect through time through the pendulum to Egypt and also how they are using the same weight and I'll go into because that same number of that weight is also built into the pyramid and all these older temples cross time cross cultures across the world so we enter like the Elizabethan period and then John Dee uh, Enochian magic famous what's he carrying uh, witches and and wizards and magicians carry the wand and it's a measuring tool and I'll put a link in the description to the history of the Hermetic because in this I discuss this Francis Drake, John Dee and Edmund Gunther and the Hermetic period where a lot of our modern imperial measurements were written down formally and from that uh, we developed the modern sciences. However, as these were all emerged from these earlier ones, these earlier measuring rods and these earlier weights. So this is just, a, they did not invent this, it's a continuation of ancient of very very ancient knowledge. Edmund Guntov as an example astronomer mathematician uh, is into his geometry and he um, f wrote down about the cross staff and what's the cross staff it's a way of measuring the height it's a way of measuring distance land distance and it's also a way of measuring astronomical um, observations and well uh, he, he, def he it should be 101 yard long and the, the yard by well, three feet or 108 grains. He also um, come up with some early trig and uh, the Gunter's chain which defines measurements all over like the surveyor's chain is the Gunter's chain 66 feet and that again 66 feet is twice the average street, uh, street width of Mahenjadaro for instance and that connects directly to this ancient very very ancient unit of measure. And so we have how these ancient units of measure later uh, formally become our, the basis of our modern science, which led to the uh, Industrial Revolution and the um, Scientific Revolution of recent centuries, all from uh, Gunther, who got it all from older ancient times. This can be measured, it can be tested, even the compass and the protractor, 360 degrees. Uh, there's an argument when it developed, but with absolute certainty, we know it become. Uh, it was written down formally: three sixty degrees, each degree sixty minutes, each minute sixty seconds. So, and uh, even like one hundred and eight grains. But again, um, then later, uh, Freemasonry developed from stonemasonry and the craft guilds. They built the cathedrals. Uh, they built all, all these things, and the wand is a direct connection to the measuring tool, just like the compass and the square and the geometry was essential in this development. Um, now, most priests will carry a shepherd's crook, but we see here, so the uh, Ukrainian Orthodox and others still literally carry the caduceus of, of Hermes. This is a symbol of authority, and just like Mercury Hermes, this is a unit uh, measuring rod, uh, a symbol of peace as well. Uh, and even the terms like the rule of law, a ruler of a kingdom, a ruler to measure scales of justice, weighing the evidence, a square deal on the level. These are all been from ancient times still in our uh, terminology. And the ancient Sumerians, the, uh, the Egyptians, Old Kingdom, and the, let's tell Brack, but uh, what I want, uh, but uh, Harappa, the uh, Indus civilization, according to official history, just all developed at the same time, uh, that they were not connected. However, they're using the same weights and measures. You can just blow this out of the water measurably. The measuring rod, the measuring wand, and I'll show this in the next uh, series because instead of just the symbols, I'm going to be using the literal measures to show that these are connected. And one of just one of the examples we can use is the Great Pyramid of Giza. So, I hope you enjoyed this series. It was just an introduction because the next I'm going to go into the numbers and the measures and show some that things. It's just it's it's recorded in the official books, but it just the, the connections haven't been brought together. And uh, there are other people who've investigated and they've basically had their academic career ruined by it. But we can we can weigh and measure these things and we can draw lines together and show that. Uh, unless you believe in coincidence in a sort of religious way that it's all a coincidence we'll know we can bring these things together so with that hope you enjoyed there's a lot more to come in the next series will all be connected back to this one cheers